Hello everyone. Welcome to the channel Physics Surgery. Today we are going to investigate a very interesting question given as a part of NCRT exemplar set of questions in the chapter of kinetic theory of gases. Okay, you can see the reference number of the question, 13th chapter, 30th question, 13.30, right? So there was a problem with the solution that is provided by NCRT to this question. Okay, so while going through this, not only we will correct this solution, but also understand a very important concept already asked in JE mains in the past papers and is a very important thing that you need to understand as a JE aspirant and a physics lover in general. Okay, so let me go ahead with the formal wording of the question, right? A box of one meter cube is filled with nitrogen, obviously assumed as an ideal gas at 1.5 atmosphere at 300 Kelvin. The box has a hole of an area of 0.01 millimeter square. How much time is required for the pressure to reduce by 0.1 atmosphere if the outside pressure is one atmosphere? If you would like to try this uh, problem, just pause here, give it a try, and then you can go ahead with the uh, explanation of the solution that I am going to provide, okay? So first and foremost, I'll try to provide the solution that is given by NCRT and try to point out the issues with that solution. And then we'll go ahead with the understanding of the concept and the correct solution. So this is the solution that is provided by NCRT, right? So I'll, we'll quickly go through each and every step that he talks about. So he's assuming the collisions of these molecules inside the box takes place, let's say in X direction. That means on a YZ plane of the box, there is uh, a hole, okay? So through that particular hole in the X direction, the molecules are going to go out and molecules from outside also start entering into the box. So he's using a symbol V1X to represent the speed of the molecule inside the box along X direction. N1, and please note this symbol, this symbol would be throughout used in this solution. N1 is not the number of moles, by the way. N1 is the number of molecules per unit volume, which is nothing but the number concentration or simply concentration of the gas inside the box. In delta T, the particles moving along the wall will collide. And if they are within a distance of V1x into delta T, right? they will be able to collide. That's what he's trying to say. So if a particle is moving with V1x speed in delta T distance, it will cover this distance and then collide with the wall. He's taking small a as the area of the wall. Then he says, uh, number of particles colliding in time delta T is simply half into the number concentration that he wrote here, multiplied by the distance that he spoke of here, multiplied by the area. So let's understand there is one problem with this particular term. So the term, let me underline that. So there is an issue with this term. This term assumes wrongly that all the molecules that you're talking about per unit volume and when multiplied by this volume travel with the same speed. And that is particularly against the Maxwell's distribution of velocities. You should understand that all the molecules don't move with the same speed. And that is where the problem starts in the solution. And then how to write the value of V1x because that would be part of our solution. So he goes ahead with the general calculation of V1x using RMS speed. Okay, so here is another problem that I have with, right? So let me mark this. This is problem number two. Okay, so let me label them one and two. And uh, also he goes ahead with the half factor stating this half is due to the motion of the particles towards both sides, positive X and negative X. So he's saying half of them at every instant are moving towards right and half of them are moving towards left. Half is not an issue. It is the issue that all molecules are moving with the same speed. That assumption doesn't sound very pretty, okay? And then he arrives at this uh, calculation. So he, he borrows this calculation here and writes the value of V1x, all of them moving at the same speed of root kT by m. So he substitutes here. So once the problem was identified here, this is the problematic part. Let's move on to the next page of the solution from NCRT. So he continues to say that the same thing happens from outside. So let's say the inside concentration is related to N1 and outside concentration is related to N2. The subtraction of the two would result in the number of molecules flowing per unit time into the um, box. Okay, so that's where pressure will start changing. He writes the famous ideal gas equation, PV is equal to mu RT. Mu is used in this problem for the symbol of number of moles. Okay, right. And then he arrives 
at the value of the number concentration in this manner. So the number concentration using ideal gas equation is P into Avogadro number divided by RT. Just keep a check on this. Okay. So after some time, tau pressure changes to P1 prime inside. And he says, okay, if at N, this is the pressure that causes the number concentration, then later stage, let's say the pressure changes to P1 prime, then one prime, which is a new value of concentration should be equal to this. So the number of particles that have gone out, he will subtract the number concentration before and after using the volume multiplication. Remember concentration is number per unit volume. So you multiply it with volume, you get the number. So this subtraction is the number of particles gone out, which is as good as this subtraction, right? So he equates it at this particular place. Then he marries the left hand side gas equation term to the right hand side distribution equation that he has found out. Okay, so he rearranges terms and he gets an expression substitute all the values that he spoke of right 1.5 and all the other numbers that he found and then he ends up at the amount of time after which all of this happens. Okay, so as I pointed out, let me point out one more time. Uh, the issue is with this particular factor that he's written, right, uh, the, with V1x and V1x being substituted for this number, okay? So let's try to correct it by first of all, understanding the concept that is required to solve this problem. Okay, so you can see at the right side of the box, I have already pre-drawn a box which contains an ideal gas which obeys kinetic theory of gases, okay, right, and also Right. At this particular place, I've drawn a particular molecule and I have marked an arrow to represent its X component of velocity. Right. I hope you can see this and the value of that X component. Let's label it as VX. OK. Right. This itself, according to the Maxwell's theory of distribution of velocities, when I say distribution. Right. So this itself is wrong. So let me point out this way or this is visualization itself is wrong that a particular molecule is moving with a particular X component of velocity is a wrong concept. Okay, so please do understand that. Okay, whereas if you see and you're actually taught this left hand side, can you concentrate this left hand side? This expression describes the Maxwell's one dimensional distribution of velocities. Okay, let me explain what the distribution means. F1 V of X DVX, he says, let's talk about that function. He has, he has written some bulky expression thanks to Maxwell, okay. What does this F1 V of X DVX mean? Okay, so I've written it here, so let's read it out. F1 V of X is the fraction of ideal gas molecules having X component of velocity between V of X and VX plus D, DVX. This is the most important point about any distribution of velocities. Okay. I know some of you might find it slightly difficult to understand. So just pause a bit here. I'll go to the next page. I'll ask you three basic questions which test your understanding of KTG or Maxwell's distribution of velocities. Okay. So stay with me. Yeah, these are the three pertinent questions that you need to answer to understand what is meant by distribution of velocities. Okay, right. First question in obviously all these questions pertain to ideal gas and KTG and Maxwell's distribution. Okay, so if the molecules are having Maxwellian distribution of velocities, let me answer the first question. Are all molecules moving with same speed in ideal gas? I think that's a very strict no. There is no distribution at all. If all of them are moving with the same speed, I don't think there is need of any distribution of velocities. My, my Maxwell's theory talks about the range of velocities uh, theoretically can change from zero to infinity, right? It's a theory, KTG, right? So T stands for theory, right? So in theory, the distribution allows the molecules to have at a particular temperature. Remember, finite temperature, you can have all the possible velocities between zero and infinity. So um, very clearly the answer to this is a no. Okay, right. Next, how many molecules are there moving with exact velocity or speed of say 300 meter per second? I'll take some temperature and according to Maxwellian distribution, all the velocities between zero and infinity are allowed, right? So next important question that arises is how many are there moving with exact speed of 300 meter per second? Right. And some of you might be surprised. Some of you will accept what I'm going to write. Answer is zero. There is no molecule which will move with exact velocity of 300 meter per second. 
there is always a distribution there is always a range that the maxwellian distribution talks about you cannot pinpoint with certainty saying that there is a molecule which moves at exact velocity once you point out an exact value then your chances of finding such a molecule is zero in a distribution rather a correct question to ask is the third one is there a fraction of total molecules is there a fraction of total molecules moving with a speed in the range between now why i'm talking about range okay right so 300 to let's say 300.05 meter per second once you speak about range answer is a non zero answer okay so the answer is yes and it's non zero that's the whole idea of distribution it's a probability it's not a certainty once you are talking about 300 in the second question you are talking about certainty and there doesn't exist any certainty in the ktg okay right so this is the correct question to ask okay right so understanding these three questions is the crux of your understanding of ktg okay right so the thing is right we are back to this there is you know even in our ncrt and pre college textbooks uh you remember the derivation of vrms assumes that all molecules are moving with same speed fortunately in some of our derivations this kind of approach is going to give you a right answer but in some cases like this one where you are trying to calculate the number of collisions of molecules with the wall per unit time you won't get the correct answer okay and this is very important to understand the distribution so with that background let's move ahead and describe a term okay let's define capital j as the number of molecules colliding per unit area per unit time we are talking about number of molecules colliding this wall let's i've shaded a wall here can you see on the right top of the screen a diagram in which i have blue shaded a wall i am now looking at that wall and per unit area of that wall per unit time how many molecules are colliding okay so that con con quantity i am defining it as some j and in brackets i am right borrowing the same symbol that ncrt has used in the solution small n is not number of moles but number of molecules per unit volume of the gas so i'll try to derive this j in terms of n so uh, i have borrowed that wall here can you see that wall i have drawn here so let's try to understand i'll put a small cylinder okay small cylinder of area of cross section small a and a length of vx into dt okay a length of vx into dt now if i wait for dt seconds all the molecules inside this which can have this range of speed vx to vx plus dvx will be able to hit this wall okay right so how many such molecules will be there inside this so that is where the fraction will come into picture so i write it is the volume of this cylinder multiplied by the fraction that i have to talk about okay so the volume of the cylinder that you are looking at here is simply a which is area multiplied by the height of the cylinder which is vx into dt can you see that a and vx into dt is the volume when i multiply this volume with the number per unit volume this entire bracket talks about number of molecules so you are talking about number of molecules inside this cylinder now it is the number of molecules but will all those molecules have the same speed v x i don't think so that is where this comes into picture so among those molecules there is only this fraction function of molecules which actually travel with the required speed this is where the multiplication becomes very important multiplied by dvx as you could see when this integration is done over the entire possibilities of all molecules ranging from you could see 0 to infinity 0 to infinity then you are looking at the actual distribution so you are not thinking of all molecules traveling with same speed rather allowing for the distribution to run its course from 0 to infinity and since the top number is only a number because it's a number multiplied by fraction then i have to divide remember you shall i underline this here so unit area i have to divide and also i have to divide with the unit time so that's the green part you could see the division here is the area and the unit time division is at the dt here so this a and dt will get cancelled and nicely n can come out okay right and i have highlighted the vx here and i substituted the f f1 v of x that you were shown right uh, in the maxwell distribution function i just substituted that part there and this integration is a pretty simple integration right so there is you have a vx here and a vx square so it is obvious that 
you can substitute this entire exponential power as a p or something and this becomes a simple integration of e power minus p okay so i have just avoided the calculation and you could see by taking zero to infinity i'm only considering molecules moving in positive direction you, you remember in NCRT solution, he writes half. Okay, I don't need to write that half because I've already considered zero to infinity. And it would be obvious for you to pe for you people to understand that if I had written minus infinity to plus infinity, then I'm considering all directions. Okay, that is plus X and minus X. Okay, so that is where my zero to infinity comes into picture. So I have done the calculation. You should trust me. You will end up getting this N by two into some square root of a familiar looking form. Okay, root two kt by pi m okay right so what i did is i multiplied and divide with two so that i get an eight here if i had eight here then i remember that this particular square root expression is the average speed root eight kt by pi m so therefore the j function which is the number of molecules per unit area per unit time so this is related to your collision frequency how frequently are molecules hitting the wall per unit time is this j which is proportional to the average speed okay and has a factor of n by 4 where n is the number concentration okay so and it's pretty simple uh, expression to remember because more is the concentration of molecules per unit volume more is the possibility of collisions uh, higher the temperature greater the speed of that gaseous molecules i think greater is the probability of the collision so a very simple expression with a four to be remembered okay and not two there so taking this expression we'll go back and correct the solution at places we found problematic okay so the first correction that goes forward in this should be at this particular place right instead of having that half ni and all that you should change this to one by four ni okay into the average speed value which is root 8 kt by pi m into the rest of the stuff which is a delta t which anyway will get cancelled so uh, the half has to be changed to one by four and v1x has to be written as that average speed so same thing goes here right the, this half will change to one by four and you can't have a root kt by m instead you should have a root 8 kt by m at this place let's keep borrowing this correction into the next page same logic applies to the outside also we are assuming that ideal gas behavior for outside scenario so again this half should become 1 by 4 and this should become root 8 kt by m pi m right and rest of the things all remain the same so the corrections keep seeping in to the rest of the solution root 8 kt by pi m and you could see that because of that the two here the two here gets changed to a four and the pi by eight would be part under the root so those are the two changes so whatever answer that you wrote before now gets changed to a different value altogether okay so that's how the correction will happen and there should be a multiplication factor of a two times of square root of pi by eight because instead of two you wrote a four and there was a missing term of square root of pi by eight at that particular place so which is a huge correction as you could clearly see there is somewhere around 1.25 1.3 times of your answer okay so that's the correction and i hope you understood this concept and you appreciate the importance of the collision frequency right so there have been instances in je exams where they have requested you to calculate the collision frequency okay right and thanks for listening uh, we will come back to this particular concept. I would like to share another video uh, inspired by this understanding of collision frequency. Till then, take care and thanks for listening and goodbye.